My name is uh, Dr. Monica Museniro Masanza. I'm the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation, Office of the President in Uganda. I want to talk about vaccines. Vaccines are among the most cost-effective uh, public health interventions that have come into play since modern medicine. And that is evidenced by the many, many vaccines that we use. Currently, there are over 20 vaccines. And here in Uganda, we have eight vaccines that are given to our children. And because of that, we have been able to fight many diseases that once used to kill our children. What is surprising is that Africa, with only 16% of the population, of the world is the biggest consumer of vaccines that are manufactured globally. We consume 25% of the global uh, volume of vaccines. What is even more surprising is that 99% of these vaccines are imported. Only 1% of the vaccine value chain is in Africa. And this is in a few countries in North Africa, where a French company actually does only what we call fill and finish. Now, in early 2020, when there was the threat of COVID, under the leadership of His Excellency the President, we foresaw that a disease like COVID is going to be tackled by vaccines. However, Africa's inability to be vaccine sufficient was a big risk. And so we decided to have an early start at building this capacity to see if we could start and address this perpetual lack and perpetual dependence. Because unlike the other diseases that we have been happy to depend on importing vaccines, COVID-19 was going to be a big demand of vaccine because the entire close to 8 billion population of the world would likely need to be vaccinated and within a short time. So Uganda took the initiative and in early 2020, we started to work on creating our own vaccine. And, uh, the Presidential Scientific Initiative in Advance. Now, the challenge with the COVID and using the science we know, we foresaw that we are going to have this big global population, 8 billion, and they are all going to need vaccination at a go. And this was going to cause a global rush. We foresaw this even before the first vaccine ever came out. And so the President, uh, uh, with his wisdom, started to set up, preside the Presidential Scientific Initiative and Epidemics to start working not only on vaccines but also on diagnostics and potential treatments because there were no treatments for any of this. And so we put together a group to start doing this work. Along the way, as the vaccines started to come, Many countries realized that our fears were indeed justified because we began to see, as the vaccine started to appear, vaccine nationalism came up. Countries that were making vaccines are those that had the financial power started to hoard these vaccines. While they were vaccinating their populations, our populations didn't even have access to the vaccine. And at that point, around April 2021, Africa CDC got on board and said, now, this issue is becoming serious. But for us, we had started unforeseen and started to prepare our scientists earlier. And when Africa CDC realized what was happening, even in Uganda, we were contacted. Actually, His Excellency wrote to them and said, we have this initiative. How can we begin to work together so that Africa 
never puts it herself again at the mercy of the world. It is true we are beginning, and it is true we may move slowly, but when shall we have a chance to start? COVID was our chance to start. And vaccines are very expensive. Many times we are not aware, but vaccines are very, very expensive. For us to be able to procure 18 million doses of vaccine, which covers 9 million people, it is estimated that just to procure the vaccine, we need 475 billion. Now, Uganda has an estimated population of 42 billion. We have calculated that if we can vaccinate 22 million of those, that will need about uh, 45 million doses of vaccine. You can estimate this cost to the nation. Initially, with the limited understanding of the science of this new virus, we thought that um, you just vaccinate people once. The current science shows that actually it is, post, it is likely, highly likely, that we are going to need booster doses. Many countries are giving a third dose as a booster dose because uh, the immunity in the vaccinated population has gone down. As we continue to follow the science, it is likely that in the future, this virus is going to stay with us, just like the measles virus is. And if the immunity is not lifelong, then we are going to need periodic boosting of vaccine in order to protect ourselves individually, but also to protect uh, epidemics like waves coming up. Secondly, we are vaccinating mostly people above 18 years. The population of Uganda, which is below 18 years, is quite significant. And every day, there are those that are joining the population above 18. They were not included in the estimates. They are going to need vaccine. And as vaccines uh, get better understood, we're likely to have these vaccines approved for children below. 18 years and my prediction is that this virus will stay with us and we will need vaccination for a long time we've been vaccinating against measles for a long time against polio for a long time and against childhood diseases for a long time so we need to understand that this is a long-term undertaking for the nation not just dealing with the current 22 million people that we need to vaccinate but we are going to need COVID vaccines in the long run it's therefore very critical unless we want to become so dependent like we are for all other vaccines if we want to become self-sufficient then we must build this capacity the other point I need to talk about is that the COVID virus has been changing we started with the virus, which initially came from China, and it was called the Wuhan strain. That virus has been changing so many, many times. And because of that, the initial vaccines that we are made using the first virus are no longer effective. They are no longer effective against the new viruses. Any country that would want to keep up to date with a vaccine they will have to have domestic capacity to quickly adapt because they have the capacity, they have built their manufacturing capacity, they have built their research capacity. So they will be able to make up-to-date vaccines to protect their population. And this is why we are building this capacity in Uganda. Resulting from uh, the discussions with the president, it was agreed that uh, a framework should be put in place to enable us to actualize Uganda's desire to begin to put in place a mechanism of building local capacity to produce not only vaccines, but also the diagnostics, including the PCR kits, and also to work on treatments because there was no cure for COVID. 
and very little was known about it. Therefore, it was agreed, working with the Prime Minister and uh, the President, that a project be established, originally referred to as the Epidemics Unit, but later named the, science, the Presidential Scientific Initiative on Epidemics. It was established as a project and a state house, just like there are many other projects in a state house. And uh, I just want to walk you through the organogram of how PRESIDE relates to other key government entities that are playing a role in this work of domestic uh, capacity development and local vaccine diagnostic and therapeutic management. Uh, PRESIDE, if you see here, uh, PRESIDE is a state house project. It is a think tank and its main role is to support it is to support scientists to make sure that they are mobilized they are supported they are organized and the work that they are doing is well coordinated and networked preside uh, being a state house project the administration is supported directly by state house so st preside staff are state house staff they have appointment letters they are managed at state house and presides administrative costs are managed by state house so funds that are allocated towards supporting preside go directly to state house and the state house controller does the accountability for that preside does not keep funds and has never been permitted to hold the funds beyond just interest we don't have a bank account because if we have our needs, they are sent directly to State House. It's really a State House office. But to make sure that funds for scientists are managed, it was agreed in a meeting together with the Minister of Finance, the Prime Minister, and many other stakeholders that the funds to support the scientific work should go to the Ministry of science, technology, and innovation. And that the, the funds that have been mentioned, the 31 billion, were transferred to the Ministry of Science, Technology, and Innovation. Please recall, I wasn't yet minister, so I was not in charge at that time. I was simply a senior presidential advisor in charge of preside uh, to make uh, the, organ the arrangements work we signed a memorandum of understanding and to avoid the duplication of roles the responsibility for managing the funds for the scientists both for pro procuring the equipment that we need and also for the scientists to carry out the work that they need to do those funds were managed by the Ministry of Science and they were the funds were used either to directly procure equipment by the ministry and they deliver those equipment directly to these institutions where the science are or transfer the funds directly to the institutions that host the scientists and it is those institutions that were responsible for managing those funds and I'm happy to tell you that um, all these institutions accounted for these funds and the Auditor General has already audited these funds twice. First, it was a special audit related to organizations that received COVID relief funds. And also then at the end of year, at the end of June, and now they are doing a wrap up uh, audit. So the funds have been managed by those institutions and they have been audited. All this long, we had these scientists. We had money somewhere, but we had to bring these things together. And so we set up this platform. It's a think tank and it enabled us, it enabled us to think beyond 
the ability that we were thinking before, bringing together. So the think tank helped us to break beyond that bondage that we can't do this, we can't do this. Secondly, it built a mechanism of support, technical support to the scientists. And uh, we were able to receive projects. A number of the projects that we are funded came resulted from a public advert that was made by the Minister of Science, Technology and Innovation. Uh, when it was decided that Preside coordinates all research work related to COVID by the Minister of, uh, Minister of Finance, then it was agreed that all those projects should be passed to Preside. And we sat together in a multi-sector meeting and picked out the projects that suited the profile. However, for certain categories of research, like vaccine, because somehow we just didn't believe <laughs> These people, there was no project that suited that. And for that, we undertook a process, which we call hackathon, and we invited the stakeholders, the government entities, and even a few non-government entities that are able, that had capacity that fits into vaccine manufacturing. And uh, we sat and held four meetings, one focused on uh, vaccines and that is how these special vaccine projects were identified and they were included and approved as the final number of projects that were to be funded under the 31 bill. So this brought uh, the total number of projects to be funded on this special COVID initiative to 23 with a total budget of 31 billion the funds allocated out of these 23 projects four focused on vaccines and the total expenditure on those vaccines on those on those projects dedicated to vaccines was 7.81 billion this figure includes both the amount which was used to procure the unique equipment that we need and the funds that were dispatched to the institutions that were are hosting uh, these scientists and these projects. I want to assure you, Uganda is on track in her quest to develop the local capacity to conduct research and manufacture vaccines right with our scientists. We have the human resource. Our scientists are very experienced and they have participated in many international projects where they have been working on vaccines. It's just that we had never harnessed them. And with the preside in place, they got that opportunity and they have been deployed. For purposes of communication about this new area in our setting, we divided the process into 10 steps. And uh, the four vaccines are at various stages. The most advanced vaccine is on stage seven. And that's the stage that completes all the studies done before you go to human clinical trials. The other vaccine is on stage five. It would even have been more progressed but we have had a few delays because of a few chemicals that have been difficult to ship uh, for us to get. But it's on stage five. Once we get the chemical to rapidly progress. Uh, the other two projects, the third vaccine is on stage four. It is there by design because when we were starting this work, there are some inputs that we tried to purchase and nobody could sell them to us. And the scientists said, wait a minute, we can do this. We have the skills. So that project is on stage four. And we already have a product 
that backbone which they refused to sell to us we now have four ugandan ones and soon we shall begin selling to other african nations which need to utilize this technology and now we are going to move that also very rapidly because they are not in races anymore it's just the release of funds and that vaccine will progress very rapidly one of the vaccines we agreed to pause it because it's one of the most modern technologies called self-replicating RNA. We had started working on it, but we needed to do some training. And when our person went out, was locked there because of the lockdown and took longer. So we agreed to pause that work. However, he's now back and is working to build a team we are going to restart this project in the next financial year. Uganda's uh, initiative has motivated many African countries. And now we see inquiries. We are beginning collaborations with other countries. This is really motivating for Africa. We have to start. If not now, then when? If not us, then who?